Mm -hmm. Do you think that now with the coalition government, the country is now headed towards the right direction? I believe so. I believe that this coalition government um, is going to be doing great things. Bola Vinaka and you're watching the Lancet 177, an original production of the Fiji Times. Now you can watch this show and other videos like this on the Fiji Times Facebook page and of course also on the Fiji Times YouTube channel. Our guest here today needs no introduction. She has been living under the watchful eyes of the public for most of her life. She was crowned Miss Hibiscus in 1988, and since then she has had her voice beamed across the radio waves, and she has graced TV screens both locally and regionally for a very long time. She is now a member of parliament with two key roles. Um, she is the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs and also the Deputy Speaker of Parliament. Ms. Lenora Ngerenger Tambua, Madam, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Me. Now, Madam, before we go into the thick of things, in please call me Lenora. Don't call me Madam. Uh, Lenora, <laughs> uh, before we go into the thick of things, in 2018 you stood for elections. Uh, I believe you sent shockwaves across the country when you chose to go into politics. Yeah. What made you make the move into politics back then, and how has the journey been for you personally? Hmm. Well, the reason I decided to stand in the 2018 elections was because I got asked by, um, by the National Federation Party to stand for them. And during that time, um, there had been a lot of things that I didn't agree with that had been happening in government. So um, I figured that, you know, if you don't agree with something, then get involved in it. That's why I, I decided to put my hand up and, and stand in the 2018 elections. 2018, after that you were part of the opposition, yes. and then uh, now you're part of the coalition government. Mm -hmm. Do you think that now with the coalition government, the country is now headed towards the right direction? I believe so. Um, I know a lot of people uh, uh, have their own opinions about how government is performing. Um, but let's not forget New Zealand, one of our closest neighbors, has had coalition governments and we've seen from their own history how long it's taken for them to gel uh, as, as different parties um, running government. But uh, I believe that this coalition government um, is going to be doing great things. We have had up till now um, just under a year and um, we have had um, missteps but I have to say that we've been very quick to admit our mistakes, apologize, learn from it, and move on. Now, uh, since then, you've, you've come a long way. Now, you, you have, uh, two, uh, you're playing two very key roles, uh, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament and also as the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs. How have things been uh, for you since taking up the role? I think it's almost a year now. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's a... a challenging, I have to say. I first uh, was elected as deputy speaker, which is one big role in itself. I have very big shoes to fill. I have a lot to learn from uh, former speakers of the House and of course the current Honorable Speaker, Turang uh, Nativa Kau. As um, Assistant Foreign Affairs Minister, I'm blessed that my minister happens to be the Prime Minister. I was originally in local government and housing and um, was surprised when I was reassigned to foreign affairs. Being deputy speaker is one big responsibility. Um, I have a lot to learn. Um, I have big shoes to fill, but I know that I have uh, people that I can count on, um, former speakers that I can learn from, their rulings in the past, the current Honorable Speaker, Turang Natuivakao. And then I've got the Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs job, which uh, I've held now for a few months. Uh, I was uh, sworn in as the um, Assistant Minister for Housing and Local Government, uh, as you know. And it's been a, a real change in the kind of people that you interact with, you know, from local government and housing to foreign affairs, but I am enjoying the roles. Um, 
we have our reporters that go out uh, every now and then, mm -hmm. and also a lot of people who write to our letters to the editor section on the paper. And it's no surprise that uh, from the letters and from the comments from the people that many see you as a trailblazer in the sense that you are a role model for younger girls and women who may have confined themselves to traditional employment. Would you agree with that assessment that you are a trailblazer? I don't know about that. I mean, I am standing on the shoulders of many, many women who have gone before me, the likes of um, Mrs. Irene Jane Ryan, Taufa um, Vakatale, just to name two. So uh, trailblazer, I don't think I am, uh, because I, again, as I said, I'm standing on the shoulders of women who have gone before me. Right. Now, uh, speaking of that as well, now violence against women and girls, it is a huge issue in the, uh, in the country right now. Um, how can you use your national platforms now to raise awareness and action against uh, gender-based violence and the impact that it has on individual families and this Fijian society as a whole? I, uh, it, it is such a complex problem. It's a problem that touches so many, so many lives, so many families. And it's just heartbreaking to, to hear the statistics time and time again, and especially now as we go into the festive season, when the use of alcohol is going to be on the rise. Um, you know, I, I think we need to turn the mirror on ourselves as, as a nation, as a people. You know, we have so many religious organizations, so many denominations, so many different religions, but how come this problem just keeps increasing? Something is not working somewhere. Now, I, I take my hat off to the, the women, the men, and the girls and the boys who stand up and, and speak against um, you know, violence against um, women and girls and children, but I think there's a huge responsibility that should be laid on the feet of our religious organizations. You know, the churches are full on Sunday. The other religious um, organizations have a lot happening, but this problem keeps increasing. So something is not working, and we really need to have a nationwide conversation about this. Thank you so much uh, for that, uh, Ms. Uh, Lenore Ngirngirtumbo. We'll just have a short break, and we'll be back after this. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back. You're watching The Lens at 177, and we have the Deputy Speaker of Parliament and Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ms. Lenore Uh Madam, in 2018, we had nine women in Parliament. This number reduced to, I think, six in the 2022 general elections. Mm -hmm. How can we improve women participation? Mm. Okay, I think uh, the responsibility, first and foremost, is with the political parties to perhaps work into their constitutions a particular number of women that they will, they, they will um, promise to field in the next local government elections, which will happen next year, or the next national elections, which will happen in 2026. So that's one way to start that. The second is to make um, political life safer for women. We have a lot of very capable women who are um, uh, managing directors, who are chairs of boards. But oftentimes when you say to a woman, you come into the public spotlight, uh, that's when they back off. And the reason is because of the kinds of attacks that women in politics seem to undergo very unfairly more than their male counterparts. So I think this is one of the things that makes women not want to uh, participate in, in, in public office. Um, but moving ahead, I hope that political parties, uh, those who are fielding candidates uh, for the local government elections, will field some great women because there are many, many to choose from. 
So are the political parties doing that already, or is that something that they have to do? Well, if the political parties are not doing it, I would urge political parties to do so. Okay. Uh, we'll just briefly talk about the opposition, the opposition mm -hmm. members who were previously part of government. Right. Uh, do you think that we have a good and capable opposition? Yes, absolutely. Um, <coughs> m most of them, I think many of them, um, held ministerial uh, portfolios in the last term of parliament. And uh, we have a very good opposition, yes. Now, if, the, if the, uh, some of the opposition members, they pitched an idea that can offer solutions in parliament mm. or even in your ministry, would you consider it or just brush it oh, aside? Oh, absolutely receive it. Uh, I think you've seen in the last uh, term of parliament, uh, there was a great um, statement from the former minister for fisheries, Honorable Semi Korela Bissau, uh, in support of the current minister for fisheries uh, end of week statement, I believe. And uh, so th it's a kind of exchange that we have. I mean, we have, you know, the leader of opposition, Honorable Inia Seruratu, who has been a climate change champion. That's one of the reasons that the prime minister um, invited him to go to, um, to COP28 uh, with him. So yeah, we, we I, I think the relationship right now with um, between government and the opposition is far better than the last term. Okay. Um, and now we jump into something a little bit, uh, uh, talking about uh, the race relations in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe that we've bridged the ethnic divide uh, of the 70s and the autocracy from 2006 to 2022? <clears throat> you know, I'd like to think that we have, but um, oftentimes when you, when you go onto social media, um, you see it rearing its ugly head again. Um, unfortunately, there is a part of Fiji society that uh, still cannot get over the fact that we are a multicultural, multi-religious, multi-ethnic multi community. And everyone has the right to be in Fiji and to call Fiji home. Um, unfortunately, some of the hangovers are still around from you know the divides that we've seen in in our in our history in our recent history especially um, but i'm hopeful that as we have reconciliation or truth and reconciliation commissions when we start talking about race relations that these things that have been boiling will um, be aired and I think it just needs to be aired for us to be able to have that conversation. And I think this is um, something that Honorable Sashi Kiran is really looking forward to leading from, from the government side. How can we bridge the ethnic divide, uh, you being a part of you know, the National Federation Party, mm. a party that uh, had uh, strong support within uh, those who were part of the sugar industry and of mm. course Indo-Fijians as well. Mm. Uh, do you think that Fijians now uh, think along national lines and voting for the best person to represent them in parliament? I, I think I think people do vote for who they really believe will represent them the best. Um, I believe that your parliamentarians, your representatives in the House should represent Fiji's population. And I, you know, people still to this day ask me, oh, Lenora, why did you choose to stand for NFP? And I go, well, why not? So I was brought up in the West. Maybe that's, that's why I don't see why not. Um, but uh, I, I, I think, look, you know, With all our advances, with everyone owning a smartphone, I'm, it, it saddens me that people can still go back and talk about race and race relations in, in a negative way. I think that, yeah, that kind of answers my question, your question, I think, okay. I hope. Um, you have a lot of experience going out into the grassroots and I'm sure you have a very good relationship with uh, people from all different backgrounds. Do you believe that the country is ready for another Indo-Fijian Prime Minister? I don't see why not. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Do you believe the country is ready for a female Prime Minister? Absolutely. Yes. If the opportunity ever comes, have you thought of maybe even one day becoming the Prime Minister? Maybe one day in the distant future. I believe right now I have a lot to learn 
from the likes of the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable um, Speaker. But, um, you know, right now my focus is to do the best job I can in the ministry that I have been assigned uh, to and as Deputy Speaker. And whatever happens will happen. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Lenor Ngeringritombo. We'll go for a short break and then we'll have our third and final segment. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back. We have the Deputy Speaker of Parliament and the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ms. Lenor Ngerngertambo, here with us today. Um, now, in our third and final segment, in your role as the Assistant Foreign Minister, uh, Foreign Affairs Minister, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges facing Fiji and the region in terms of the geopolitical influences of developed countries? Hmm. I think one of our biggest challenges is um, one at home managing expectations of of, uh, of our people, managing our ex uh, the expectations of our people when it comes to our relations with with other governments, and when it comes to our relations with other governments, it's I think one of the most important things is that we understand that every country has the sovereign right. Um, to self-determination, and the same goes for us. And um, I know that I am confident that going forward, when we talk to our overseas um, partners, development partners, that we can have honest conversations about what it is we really need, um, you know, when it comes to um, development and development opportunities for, for Fiji and for Fijians. Now the, minister, the foreign ministry, the foreign affairs ministry, it's uh, like Fiji's window to the world, mm -hmm. uh, and f and we are a very small country compared mm -hmm. to to the world. And uh, in the globalized world, what does Fiji offer to the international community? First, is you know we might be a small nation, like you said, but we are a star in the Pacific. And what we offer the world is that we can be the voice of a unified region. Uh, we've got the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, we've got the MSG, we've got PIDF, we've got SPREP, we've got so many organizations with which we can um, project not only Fiji but the Pacific to the world. And having the Honorable Prime Minister as our Prime Minister, he's a statesman, uh, he holds this mana uh, that so much so that he can speak for the Pacific. And as you saw at the, um, at, in, in the Cooks with the uh, PIFs um, last summit, um, he and Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, uh, Marape, have been asked to be the, the uh, peace envoys uh, on behalf of, um, of uh, the, the opening the conversation between Indonesia as uh, to um, West Papua. So what Fiji offers the world is we are the mouthpiece of the Pacific, and I think we need to start acting like that, that we are um, big ocean people, not a small island developing state, which we still are, but we are big ocean people. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lenor Ngeringer uh, You know, it's also a, a time of festivities here in mm. Fiji. Uh, just finally, maybe just your message to the general public, mm. your Christmas message okay. to people. My Christmas message to everybody, I hope you and your loved ones have a very, very blessed Christmas. Please be safe. Please be kind to one another. Be kind to everything that you see that has a life and i'm talking about animals especially and um, please don't drink and drive and uh, remember when it comes to domestic violence domestic violence is everyone's business if you see something say something god bless you and have a blessed christmas 
Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Ngirikmir Tambo, for being with us here today. Now, uh, to watch this show and to watch more, please uh, uh, visit our Facebook page, uh, the Fiji Times Facebook page, and of course, subscribe to the Fiji Times YouTube channel to watch the Lancet 177. And also, to get the latest news, visit www.fijitimes.com.fj. Until the next time, Ms. Amadi.